Okay, I'd like to welcome you all to this week's report. Um, it's been another windy week, but there's a lot of good fishing happening. So, a lot of stuff to cover, but before I get into it, I want to take a minute to uh, give you my interpretation of what's happening with the, with the wind here. And I'm going to cut out to a, a video I did on my uh, computer showing what's going on using the Windy app to try and explain the weather we've been having here over the last few weeks and even a month. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the weather we've been having here in Southern California and why it's been the way it is. Um, Point Conception, which you can see here where my little hand thing is, is kind of the defining line between uh, Central and Southern California when it comes to weather. And we get the weather up here in San Francisco, all the way down Morro Bay, all that. And um, normally Point Conception, as you can see here, this is Wednesday afternoon, blocks this wind and takes the stronger wind to the outside. You can see it's yellow out here by Nick and Miguel and Half of Rosa. Uh, the green line basically running to the edge of Clemente. And that's what will create a classic uh, Catalina Eddy. Normally, this line will stay a little bit further outside of this. The, the green line will actually be close to where Nick is as opposed to Clemente on a normal year. And on the years where we had all the really warm water with the yellows and Wahoo and all that stuff, we didn't get any of this at all, really. So this is basically a, a standard weather pattern. But for whatever reason this year, it seems to be uh, affecting us more. And you can really see here... This, the closer the weather gets to the coast above uh, Point Conception, the more it comes into the Southern California Bight here. I'm gonna, this is all set for Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to go into tomorrow, Thursday. Now, you can see that getting closer to the coast up there and sliding in on our stuff as well through Thursday morning. And then by pausing it here again, by midday Thursday, it's 11 a.m., we've got that classic Catalina Eddy. Um, where it basically stays, the weather stays outside, swirls around. That gives us that normal springtime southeast wind that we get so much of in April through June along the beach. And usually makes for nicer weather outside, but as you can see, instead of staying out where it's supposed to be, the weather's coming in side. Now, as we go into the weekend, it's going to slide back out. Put this map in motion. This is a Thursday night and a Friday. Friday, you can see it's starting to back out. That Catalina Eddy's forming, getting more dominant there. Now it's outside of Clemente. This is Friday afternoon. The west wind will move back in like it does every afternoon, but then it slides back out. And here we are on a, on Saturday morning. We're back in that normal situation. We'll be, but you'll notice above Point Conception that, that weather line has moved outside again now, and that's what's creating this opening. So what's happening here is instead of kind of staying like it should be, it keeps wanting to push back in. I'm going to go through to uh, Sunday here as well. This is a Saturday afternoon. See it tightening back up there in the Sunday morning. And then here comes that wind again. It's going to stay in there tight through Sunday. We still have a strip of good weather there by Cap, but we're going to have strong southeast on the beach and a lot of west in the afternoon. Going into Monday, it's still messed up the Channel Island. Still getting that strong Kathleen and Eddie there. And then... You can really start to see it form there through Monday afternoon into Tuesday when the weather will hopefully push out here again and stabilize a bit. You can see that uh, circling action of the weather here. This is Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night and Wednesday. Then we get into that really good weather again. But basically, for whatever reason this year, this wind line keeps wanting to push in. And that's why we've been having this crazy windy April here and it's Hopefully going to go back to normal in May. But I remember years, 20 plus years ago, when that wind line lived on the backside of Clemente the entire summer. So the good news is, despite all the wind on the outside, it's not really getting down to that tuna area. And I think that it's not going to have a real big effect on our offshore fishing other than to make it a little bit rougher than normal. But uh, that's about it. Now let's go back to the report. Okay, before I get into the report, I want to mention one more thing that's happening. The uh, CCA California is hosting their second annual uh, Coastal Social uh, Bass Tournament in San Pedro. It's uh, open to kayakers and boaters. The tournament is basically formatted that you can start fishing at 6 a.m. at the line's end, so you're not starting anywhere in particular. If you want to run somewhere, you can run there before the tournament starts, You can, and then you have to be in a, way in at uh, 22nd Street Landing. 
I think at three o'clock you'd have to look on their website uh, coastalsocial.org. Um, it's a fun tournament. Uh, it's fifty dollars per person, up to three people per team on a boat. Uh, kayakers, I think, are fifty dollars as well, and they're a one-person team. Kayakers measure in inches for their three fish, and boaters weigh their biggest three fish. Um, lots of great prizes, a lot of fun. So uh, if you're interested in trying it out, you should check out their website and uh, sign up to be there this weekend. I'm not going to be able to make it because I have uh, other obligations, but I really had a good time last year. And I missed it. I'm not going to be able to do it this year. Um, getting into the fishing, let's uh, let's head up to the Channel Islands. Um, it's still been really windy up there, but there's been really good fishing as well. And uh, on sea bass, especially the uh, overnight boats and three quarter day boats and stuff have been getting some really nice sized fish up to 60 pounds uh, pretty regularly. Uh, the Aloha Spirit all week long has been on them, and I know that they're getting these fish on a mix of squid and fin bait and also uh, artificial lures. I always constantly see pictures of the uh, Sean Stewart showing off big fish he's getting on a 7 inch uh, split tail pearlescent uh, uh, slug type bait on a lead head up there and I, I'm assuming they're fishing, they're metering these fish and dropping on them and just they're biting what they're dropping on them so um, I, you know, I haven't heard about a lot of skips going up there and getting them but uh, it's been kind of rough for that. The, uh, the weather's still up up there but the areas where the fish are being caught it doesn't look very rough so I imagine it's in the lee of one of the islands. And uh, you might have to have a kind of a rough boat right there or back, depending on the wind. But once you fish, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, they're also getting some nice rockfish up there still. I think most of the guys are fishing rockfish still on the coast due to the weather at the islands. It's going to be blown out at Rose and Miguel for as far as I can see into the future here. There might be one or two small windows of better weather, but I'm sure the residual swell and everything is going to have it all messed up. Um, nothing at San Nick or Santa Barbara. Recently, it's just been windy out there the whole time. Uh, heading down to Clemente, a um, couple different things going on. There's a, a yellowtail and sea bass bite on a, on squid there on the backside. The Freedom's been on that bite now for a couple weeks and had some pretty good hits of nice sized yellows and some good sized sea bass. Um, the weather's hampering that that area as well. It's getting blown out quite a bit here. Uh, the bass fishing is surprisingly good at the island. Uh, I had a couple of friends go out on Saturday, Gary Reyes and Jay Jones and James Little went out and they uh, they fished the island all day, had kind of slow fishing in the morning, but on the afternoon tide it really went wide open. They got a lot of really nice sized calicos on weedless swim baits. Uh, Gary prefers his own uh, Reyes baits, or Reyes swim baits it's called. If you haven't checked them out at some of the local shops in the LA area. Um, they had good weedless fish on a good great fish. He said the water temp was anywhere from 61 or 62 up to 64 in the afternoon at the island, which is really good considering all the wind we've had. Um, I'm going to try and go out there at some point in the future, maybe next week if I can swing it. Um, but again, you got to find the right weather window. There's a weather window Saturday and then another one Wednesday of next week that the island looks fishable for a small boat. Um, let's end the Catalina. The, uh, haven't heard a lot from the island. There's uh, the sport boats are still running over there catching a few bonita. Haven't heard much about yellowtail this week. Uh, bass, rockfish, stuff like that. The guys are still getting sea bass at the island, but I haven't really haven't heard a lot. Uh, according to Fish Dope, the conditions are kind of mixed up over there, so there's good and bad spots depending on what the conditions are. So if you get to an area that doesn't look good, cold, or real dirty, I'd drive around a little bit and see if you can find some better conditions. Um, Heading into the coast, it's so slow. Uh, my friend Vaughn Podmore, who runs uh, Salty Fly Guide Service, has been had a couple of charters, I guess, fishing the break wall. And uh, he reported the bass biting, but uh, red tide, dirty water, 55 degree water, um, just not nice. It needs some more time to recover without wind on it. Um, guys are getting some fish, uh, bass out in the deeper spots like geysers, no types of rocks and wrecks. Uh, and reefs, you could probably go out there and make a day of it, but it's not going to be wide open, I wouldn't imagine. Um, rockfish, they're still catching along the beach, but it's nothing to write home about. I'm going to skip the Coronado today because uh, all the boats that were fishing there bailed on it because it was bad enough that uh, that they're going to venture offshore, the full day boats out of San Diego anyway. Last I heard it was cold and dirty and not a whole lot happening down there. That might turn around here any time, but we're going to need a uh, Need some conditions to change in on the beach down there. Um, 
the big news still is the offshore fishing in Mexican waters. Uh, there's really good fishing down in the overnight to day and a half range. And the reason it's day and a half range is these trip, a lot of these fish are being caught at night. So you can get there on an overnight trip, but you may not have a lot of fishing time in the prime time, which is in the dark. So they're running day and a half, day and three quarter trips to get the boat into position to catch those fish when they're biting at night. Um, I've seen all kinds of sizes of fish coming out of there. There's fish 20, 30 pounders up to 150 plus pounders. Um, seems like different boats are getting different sized schools. Uh, that night bite is a pretty good distance away from uh, from San Diego, but certainly not that far. Boats are leaving at normal time and being down there in five or six hours, I think, after getting bait. Um, maybe a little, even a little less than that. Um, the full day boats are fishing a little closer to home. They're getting in fish. San Diego had them two days in a row. I think they had seven and 12 on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, Tuesday, they had you know, a couple of 80 pounders look like, so nice grade of fish. Seeing a lot of fish, not really biting all that well. Which is kind of typical for bluefin tuna and sport boats uh, anyway, you know, except I guess unless you're fishing at night. But uh, even during the day, a lot of those fish are coming on jigs. I talked a little bit about the flat fall and the slow pitch uh, jigs last week. And uh, something I want to talk about now is the smaller jigs that the guys are getting them on during the day. Like these, this is a cold sniper type, this is a fish lab, 60 gram jig. All these jigs come with small treble hooks and you're going to want to get rid of that and put a big, uh, bigger hook on this. This is a... I have VM, some kind of VMC hook. Um, any kind of long shank, heavy duty, single J hook is the way to go with these. I know it looks kind of dumb that the, that the hook is half the size of the jig, but the bluefin don't really care. They're eating these things on the sink. It's not a, not a big consideration. The smaller, uh, I don't have one here right now, but the smaller flat fall and slow pitch jigs uh, are working as well during the day. Um, some that nobody's really talking about, but you know, these bluefin are acting just like every other tuna has that's ever come around Southern California in that they will bite a jig. I mean, I've caught bluefin, yellowfin, albacore, all on yo-yo jigs like this mint and white Taddy 9. I couldn't find the mint and white one, but if I did, I'd be holding up to the Taddy 4 heavy. Uh, you'd fish these jigs for tuna just like you would fish them for yellowtail. Drop the jig down. Get it to the depth you want to get it to, like I talked about, with knowing how much line you have out, mark line and stuff like that. And then just using the stop and go retrieve fast, slow, pause, drop it back down. And with tuna, it seems like to me, a lot of the bites that I've gotten using this type of thing with a yo-yo technique is when I pause and I kick it and freeze spool, the second that jig falls, that fish is almost all the bites come that way or it comes on the sink. But you know, uh, you'll get plenty of bites from the wine too, so use some presentation with it. Don't just, if it's slow fishing and everybody's fishing the same jig, like everybody's got a cold sniper type jig on, or everybody's got a flat fall type jig on, try something different. Try a Taddy 4 or a Taddy 9, something like that. Just change it up a little bit. Um, I think it was 1993 or 94 when these bigger bluefin first got into uh, one day range in my lifetime. And we didn't have any of that fancy stuff and they wouldn't bite bait, so we just dropped jigs down and caught, I mean, four or five fish on a trip all on the all on a tay nine so there's no reason not to fish it um try some different things you know just if they're biting something really well go ahead and use that if they're not biting anything real well change it up throw a service iron out and sink it out you know that's something else you know whether you're fishing yellowtail or you're fishing tuna or whatever if there's fish that are suspended below the surface that are not biting a jig or bait bomb out a cast with a 7x or a 45 let that thing sink 60 70 feet and bring it into you know, 30 to 45 degree angle, and fish it like you was a, a, a jig, you know, like you're actually presenting it. Speed it up, slow it down, you don't have to burn it, don't do that. A lot of times those fish will just, if they see something different, and they'll react to it. So that's, uh, that's about it for this week.